Professional Wrestling We've always loved the larger-than-life characters, their stories, their abilities, and perhaps most importantly, how they look. If I were to say Hulk Hogan, you in your mind will picture Hulk Hogan. But when I say Rey Mysterio, you picture different masks you've seen him wear. And that's the important thing, masks. Masks have been and still are a big deal in wrestling, be it in Mexico, Japan, or America. Throughout wrestling history, some of the most iconic personalities have wore masks. So with that in mind, I'm Walt, the most gangster nerd on YouTube, and these are 10 of the greatest masked wrestlers of all time. Mick Foley as Mankind I know it's kind of a stretch considering a masked wrestler, but hear me out. Perhaps the most famous and popular version of the three faces of Foley, Mankind is actually a three-time WWE World Champion. Showing up in 1996, portraying a schizophrenic who was disturbed and deranged, this would work out perfectly as he would participate in some of the most brutal matches in WWE history. Boiler Room Brawls, Buried Alive, and probably best remembered, Hell in a Cell in which he was thrown off the cage and through a table and then later slammed through the cage falling to the ring underneath. However, the best way to prove how popular he really was and still is, simply go back to the Monday Night Wars, when WCW would give away the endings to Monday Night Raw. Tony Schiavone would notoriously inform the audience that Mankind would be winning the world title. According to Nielsen ratings, everybody watching turned the channel, myself included. Mr. Wrestling 2 Back in the 1970s, Johnny Walker, who had been a wrestler for quite a while, seemed to be moving towards retirement. That would change quickly. Tim Woods, the original Mr. Wrestling, was leaving the Georgia Territory. Jerry Jarrett, booker for the Georgia Territory at the time, had a brilliant idea. Give Johnny Walker a mask and name him Mr. Wrestling 2. And it worked. As Mr. Wrestling 2 became a superstar. Winning the Georgia heavyweight title on 10 different occasions, as well as many other titles all over the South, Mr. Wrestling 2 was so popular, he even managed to get invited to the White House by then-President Jimmy Carter. Awesome. Rey Mysterio Considered pound for pound one of the best wrestlers of all time, Rey Mysterio began his career at 14. First in Mexico's AAA promotion, then on to ECW briefly before finding his way to WCW. Moving up the ranks of their cruiserweight division, holding their title an impressive five times, defeating other all-time greats such as Dean Malenko, Eddie Guerrero, Billy Kidman, and Chris Jericho. But then WCW would almost ruin Ray, making him take his mask off. Though this did seem to begin his period as the giant killer, with huge defeats over Kevin Nash, Bam Bam Bigelow and Scott Norton. Not long after this would come the end of WCW. Ray would wrestle on the independents before showing up in WWE in 2002 with his mask and moving on to become the first three-time cruiserweight champion, multiple-time tag team champion, intercontinental champion, and WWE world champion. And he has also had incredible runs in Lucha Underground and AAA and has appeared in New Japan. Awesome. The Destroyer Dick Byer, aka Dr. X, aka The Destroyer, is the definition of what a masked wrestler was supposed to be. This man, like others on this list, never removed his mask, literally living his gimmick, even to today. Starting his legendary career in the old school World Wrestling Associates, he would become a multiple time world champ, defeating legends like Freddie Blassie, Dick the Bruiser, and Pedro Morales. The Destroyer would also find incredible success in Japan, winning the All Japan Pro Wrestling US Championship four separate times. To add to that, he would set a Japanese record, as his match with the legendary Ricky Dozan drew 70 million television viewers. He would also go on to have great success in the AWA, becoming Dr. X, even defeating Vern Gagne himself to become AWA World Champion. Even in retirement, the Destroyer's legend has continued to grow, as he would induct Gorgeous George into the WWE Hall of Fame, and be awarded by the Japanese government the Order of the Rising Sun's Gold and Silver Rays, for a lifetime spent promoting goodwill and bicultural exchange between Japan and the US. Awesome. The Ultimo Dragon the last student of the great Bruce Lee and one of the most decorated champions in the history of professional wrestling, 
few wrestlers have had the iconic career that the Ultimo Dragon has. Being a master of Japanese strong style, lucha libre, and American style wrestling, he has wrestled in front of sold out crowds all over the world. Most people in America remember his awesome run in WCW, dominating the cruiserweight division, and his entirely too brief WWE run. However, this man has been world champion all over the world in several different divisions. And this is on top of being two-time cruiserweight champ and two-time television champ in WCW. But perhaps just as impressive as any of those is the fact that the Ultimo Dragon was the first man in the history of professional wrestling to ever hold and defend 10 world titles at the same time and doing so for over a year. Incredible. Tiger Mask. They say the original is always the best, and this is no exception. Satoru Sayama, who was an incredible in-ring talent, would take a character based on a comic book and video game personality, which would be suicide in America, and made it into an international sensation. This man is perhaps one of, if not the single largest reason, we have a cruiserweight or junior heavyweight division in Japan. He first became an NWA champion in Mexico, but upon his return to New Japan, he would become the mega star that we all know and love. With a new innovative style that allowed him as a junior heavyweight to be a fierce and competitive threat to anyone, he is the only man in history to ever hold the NWA junior heavyweight title and WWF junior heavyweight title at the same time. Satoru would unfortunately become disenfranchised with wrestling and would move on to enjoy success in mixed martial arts, which really isn't that bad. Mascarez, the man of a thousand masks. Mil Mascarez is without a doubt the reason Lucha Libre became as popular as it did outside of Mexico. Bringing his highly unique look and a high flying style that at the time in the 1960s was revolutionary, Mil Mascarez would manage to gain a following all over the world. Being a world champ on four separate occasions and countless secondary titles from all over Mexico, Japan, and the United States, Mil Mascarez is one of the very few to have a career that stretched an insane six decades, making his professional debut in 1965. This living legend has managed to be a top draw for his entire tenure and even still wrestles to this very day, still in his mask. Jushin Thunder Liger you know exactly who this guy is. He is probably the most recognizable masked wrestler in the history of Japanese wrestling. And it's not just the aesthetic that gives this legend his appeal. Liger is one of the all-time greats. Being both a high flyer as well as a technical master, the talent that this man possesses is mind-blowing. He has wrestled just about everywhere, be it Japan, Mexico, the US, the UK, Canada, and he has held championship gold in all of the above. Most notably, his 11 times as IWGP light heavyweight champion. And even though he got his start in 1984 and has spent three decades in the big leagues, he continues to amaze, garnering a whole new generation of fans as he has literally became a modern day indie sensation. Blue Demon During his career, the Blue Demon was a household name in Mexico. He would don his mask for the first time in 1948 in the Mexican Wrestling Enterprise, the precursor to the modern day CMLL. Winning the NWA World Welterweight title in 53 and holding on to it impressively until 1958. The 60s and 70s would see Blue Demon continue to thrive as he would star in 25 different movies enjoying a popularity unmatched by any wrestler today. To add to that, in 88, he would battle his longtime rival El Rayo de Jalisco in an infamous mask versus mask match, seeing him defeat El Rayo and take his mask, which is a super big deal in lucha tradition. Also in 1988, Blue Demon would retire, but not before passing the mantle of the Blue Demon on to Blue Demon Jr., who would go on to become the first masked NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Unfortunately in 2000, Blue Demon would pass away, and keeping with lucha tradition even in death as he had in life, would be laid to rest with his iconic blue mask on. Awesome. El Santo Without a doubt the greatest masked wrestler as well as the greatest luchador of all time. 
Much like how Ricky Dozen is the beginning of modern professional wrestling in Japan, El Santo is the beginning of Lucha Libre in Mexico. 1942 would see El Santo don his mask, and in 1946, he would defeat eight other men to become the inaugural NWA World Welterweight Champion. By the 1950s, he was a bona fide megastar. One of his best remembered and most important moments came in 1952 when he would face Black Shadow in a mask versus mask match. A match considered the most pivotal as it would submit the importance of the mask to the luchador. El Santo would be victorious. This would be the catalyst that turned the Blue Demon into a good guy and serve as the launch point for their epic rivalry, including their epic battle in 1953. El Santo would wrestle all the way up until 1982, remaining a force and holding several titles along the way. And that's just a brief look at his wrestling career. The Saint also starred in 52 movies, sometimes along with other masked luchadors such as Blue Demon and Mil Mascaris, a feat which The Rock and Hulk Hogan together do not even come close. He also allowed for his image to be used in a comic book titled El Enmascarado which was the best-selling comic in Mexico many, many times and ran for 35 years continuously. Throughout his career, and even after it, El Santo was never seen without his mask. Hardly anyone knew what he looked like or what his real name was. Unfortunately, he would pass away in 1984. Thousands would show their respect as his funeral, and El Santo would begin the now iconic lucha tradition of being laid to rest with his mask on. And that's the list. Now we both know I'm right. But if you want to add to it, hit me up in the comments. I'm Walt, the most gangster nerd on YouTube. And I'll be seeing you soon enough.